Hey, what's up, people? It's Rashad Jones, Rashad Jones Photography. And I really want to just explain my workflow when it comes to taking pictures and an easy way to have your the time that you spend like really cut in half, maybe shoot 75%. The easiest way to do this, I, I have to utilize Lightroom. Lightroom is my favorite app to use for um for photos and photo editing so because i don't do a lot of photo manipulation but i i i want to be able to take the pictures and recreate what i actually saw in real life so right now this is an image i did from a set a couple months ago you see snow is in the background model in the front and i just want to explain what i do so first of all, what i like to do is just have a rough edit, a roughly edit the photo just to see how I want it to be. All right. There's about nine, 10 pictures in this whole set. So I'm going to use this picture as the prototype for the rest of them. So what I first want to do is ex increase my exposure just to brighten it up, add a slight amount of contrast just to give it a little bit of depth. I want to add some highlights because it's pretty, it's pretty dim shot. Also want to take out some shadow. I want to increase my whites. And I also want to take out some of the black because I don't want it to be too dark of an image. Also, anytime, this is a quick tip, if you're dealing with people that have darker hair, especially like when you're dealing with African American models, you need to take out the black because the hair is going to be more of a brown texture anyway. And that'll give you an easier way to see the definition in the hair. Also, next, going to color. I like the temperature that was shot at as a warm photo. I'm going to take just a little bit of the tint out. I'm going to add some vibrance just to give some more shine in the background. Also, I'm going to add some more saturation just so I can make it just a tad bit more warmer for the model. Going down to effects, I want to add texture, just a little bit of texture, so we can see some more hair definition, definitely some more clarity. Take that to about 10. Slight amount of the haze because it's a pretty clear photo. Uh, I'm not going to do any vignetting, no grain. I'm not going to split tone this today. Um, detail, I like where it's sharpened at. Uh, I don't need, I don't. I'm going to keep the detail the same. I add just a slight amount of masking. This is about 10. I don't want any noise reduction. Um, for the color noise reduction, I'm going to keep the detail where it is. I'm going to take the smoothness out. I don't want a, a super soft image. I want it to be as realistic as possible. I take that about 25. Leave the detail where it is. I'm not messing with the optics, nor am I going to mess with the geometry of the photo. I'll leave that as, as is for now. All right. So I got all that down. I'm going to go back up to color. I lied. To light. And I'm going to just adjust the curve. For this photo, I want to increase the highlights and the shadows some more. So I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to go to midway between the top. Because like this right here is going to make it super ashy looking. I don't want that. So I'm just going to increase the highlights as well. A lot of times, like traditional photographers say, yeah, you should do an S-curve. Like you need to be able to have the flexibility to play around with it to get the image that you want. And if it's not going to fit the traditional mold of it, so be it. That's the image that you want. All right. So this is what. I remember seeing when I shot this in real life. So this is what I'm looking for. So the cool thing about Lightroom is that you can do a couple of things. You can batch edit and you can also save what your settings are as a preset. What I like to do personally is anytime I do a, anytime I do a photo session, I make my base photo, have all the settings I want, then I go in the three dots at the top and click on where it says create preset all right it's going to automatically um have all the adjustments that you made there so i'm going to click on this it's a preset name i'm going to say 
just um, I'm gonna say testing because that's all we're doing. Just a quick test. Click on that. Click on done. Click on the arrow. Testing. Add user presets. Next, and this is an awesome function too. Um, click on the three dots at the top, top right hand corner, and go to where it says copy settings. Click on copy settings. Again, just like the preset, but it's just going to copy the settings for this individual photo. All right, click on that, copy to the clipboard, go back out. I went ahead and made this an entire, an entire photo album. So anytime you're having photos and you're doing a session, the easiest way to organize this is to do it as an album. So you'll have to do is click on the photo you want to you want to do. I'm gonna click on five of these. Go to add two at the bottom. Select the plus sign where it says destination on the top left. Create new. You want an album. And then put the album name, test, and then click OK. All right. Go, you're going to take those same photos and you're going to add them to the album. All right. When it says test, click on that. Click add. Five photos copied to test. All right, real simple. So we're gonna go back to our test photos. Click on that. Now we have all these photos here. So I'm gonna just highlight all of them. Click on where it says paste and click the paste. And then all the photos are gonna be on the same photo. Since I've already done this set, I don't feel like going back and changing them back to the original settings. But after you've done that, you can click on paste and all the photos in that session now have those same settings applied. This right, this doing this has, has tremendously helped my, my workflow. The, the, the best part is not only are you saving time, you also are building up a catalog of your own presets. My, my dad told me a long time ago, don't pay for something that you can do yourself. And making a preset is something that you can do. It's cool when you have like these like glitzy and glamorous people on Instagram or wherever you follow them at. And they have like these like preset packs. I would not buy a preset pack. If you can find one for free online that has like that give you like a head start on some ideas download that but if you know just because i got five million subscribers doesn't make me an expert it just makes me popular so what i would do if i was you like i do myself make your own preset every time i have a photo session i make a preset it just makes my life easier so then i can go back through i can have something as a a base for a photo or if I don't feel like going through and individually tinkering, or if I'm shooting at a, in, in a similar place or similar situation, I already have presets for that. So then I can go through, click on my preset, and then adjust it to how I want the current session to be. All right, so what I would advise everybody to do is make your own presets. <laughs> it, it, it'll, it'll be much easier and, and you'll find you'll have a lot of gain from a lot to gain from that again if you utilize lightroom i would encourage you to take out the time to get that ten dollars to use that lightroom creative cloud invest in yourself invest in your business utilize this tool because it's gonna be the easiest way to really jump start and make your workflow really fluid with that being said this is Rashad Jones from Rashad Jones Photography. I hope you all have an awesome day.